Obama for hosting the event tonight. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous facility. Uh, it's one of my first times having a chance to, to be in here and, and view it, and it's an outstanding uh, venue and perfect for tonight's meeting. So again, uh, welcome uh, to the event here where we're going to talk about uh, the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics Morganton campus. I um, want to talk a little bit about um, well, we're supposed to have some slides up here uh, for the, for, for, to view, um, and uh, the slides are not up here, but there they are. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the project and how we uh, got to this point. Um, so uh, this worked a little while ago. Uh, it's not, the slides aren't advancing. But uh, anyway, so uh, I've done this about 25 times, so I can do it from heart. Um, the... North Carolina School of Science and Math is, I want to say just a little bit about the school in case you haven't, or in case you're not familiar with uh, the school at all. And hopefully those of you who, who aren't or weren't familiar, over the past year you've become much more familiar with uh, NCSSM. Um, our school is uh, the school that was founded in 1980, the first of its kind uh, in the world, which is um, a school where North Carolina was looking for an opportunity to uh, grow talent within the state, keep them here in North Carolina, and help to uh, advance the, the economy of North Carolina as it was moving forward. So we were the very first school of our kind in the world in 1980 when the state of North Carolina established us. And since then, we have grown to now where uh, we have 680 students who are residential students on the campus who live there. We educate another thousand through our virtual education programs and over the years we started as a part of the state of North Carolina and we became a part of the university system. A lot of people don't know that uh, NCSSM is one of the 17 constituent campuses of the University of North Carolina. Uh, so they treat us just like UNC Charlotte, UNC Asheville, Appalachian State, uh, all of the other campuses and so that's been a great benefit to be a part of that. And today uh, at NCSSM, or this past year, for example, we had almost 1,500 students who applied to attend uh, NCSSM, and of those 1,500 students, we could only accept 340 students into our residential program. So there are many more students in North Carolina who want the opportunity and who can't have the opportunity because of lack of space. So uh, our school began to uh, look at expanding really back in 2008. 2010, we lost the ability to uh, add any more students to the school, and so over that time, we began to look at uh, expanding the school. And really, uh, in 2012 was my first conversations about the possibility of opening a second campus here in Morganton, North Carolina. And those conversations began with a real grassroots effort here in the local community. Uh, led by many of the leaders that are here tonight. The, the Collett family was one of those folks. The, the city and governmental leaders in the county and the city of Morganton in the Unifor region. So those conversations really started back in 2012. And then in 2013, the General Assembly uh, asked us along with the Department of Public Instruction and the UNC system to conduct a feasibility study to look at the possibility of expanding uh, uh, to a second campus here in Morganton, North Carolina. We did that uh, and presented it to the General Assembly. And then uh, through continued efforts uh, in the community and in the region to help promote this, in 2015, the General Assembly put forward a $2 billion bond issue to improve the facilities in the state of North Carolina. And part of that was $58 million to open a second campus of NCSSM here in Burke County in Morganton. And so that is the sort of the, the long path to help where we uh, are today with the facility. And a lot has happened uh, since the bond passed in March of 2016. And what we did was, the first thing we did was to hire an architect for the project. Uh, we brought the architect team on. Then we brought the Friday Institute uh, out of NC State on to help us plan the educational program. And then we hired our project director, Kevin Baxter, who lives here in Morganton since January uh, of this past year. And since that time, we have begun the planning process in earnest. Again, the conversation started long before January for this project, but since then, we established a core planning team 
which consists of 23 members of that planning team. And those, those folks include NCSSM alumni, faculty, and staff. Uh, and it also included five leaders from this region. Uh, and those folks are here this evening. And I, after I mentioned their names, I'd love the whole core planning team, who I think almost all are here to raise their hands to be recognized for their efforts. Because over the past uh, eight or nine months, these folks have met many times uh, and looked at a whole lot of information. We've had thousands of people that have provided information through surveys, through focus groups, through design charrettes. We've done visits to uh, schools in Virginia and South Carolina to look at this. And all this has come together in the plan that you're going to see here today, which is the educational program vision for the campus, as well as um, the master plan for the facility design. And so the core planning team, those 23 members in the local community, we had uh, City of Morganton manager Sally Sandy, we had WPCC president Michael Helmick, we had uh, Larry Putnam, who's the superintendent of the Burke County Schools, uh, Enoch Moeller, who's the head of the Google site in Lenore, and Ellen Collett, who lives right here and was one of the, the, the folks that really helped from a grassroots level move this project forward. Uh, beginning in 2012. So all of these folks have worked really hard uh, over the past nine months to get to where we are today, which is uh, a milestone for this, this uh, campus. Um, so the core planning team members, I see a lot of them here. If, those of you that are on the core planning team, if you could raise your hand and uh, let us give you a hand for your work to get to this point. And I also want to uh, say that um, beginning in 2012, I've been involved in a lot of projects in my 25 years of in, in public education, and I have never been involved in one that there was universal support uh, from the entire community and region. Uh, from that early, earliest conversations, the business community, local governmental uh, agencies, um, all of the, the various community leaders, K-12, higher education, have all been from the very beginning, they came and they said, what can we do to be helpful for this project and have been on board ever since uh, we started. And so I just want to say for me personally and all of the folks at NCSSM to say big, a big uh, thank you to all of the leaders and members of the community here in Morganton as well as the Unifor region for your support to getting us here today. So thank you all for all you've done. So let's give yourselves a hand. I think by the fact that if you look around the room, we have a number of legislators for whom this project is, a, is something that they're very proud of. Uh, they're here this, this uh, afternoon and evening. We have a number of the city leaders who are here, the county leaders who are here, and leaders from all over the region. And I think by their presence and all of your presence, it speaks volumes to the importance of this project. Uh, and, it, and for not only this region, the Unifor region, but for the state as a whole, as we've gone around the state and talked to people about this project um, all over the western part of the state, it's um, unbelievable the enthusiasm for it. And I think there's just, as, as I've gotten a sense of, in this part of the state, there's a real feeling of, as I like to, th to think about it, as it, it's, it's a pot on the stove that's boiling. Uh, or moving towards bullying. There's a lot of excitement, and we're just so happy as a part at NCSSM to be a part of uh, the excitement that's going on right here. We think that we can bring something to the region, uh, and we know that we're going to get a lot from this. I think you'll see as the plan unfolds, we've tried to shape what we're doing with NCSSM Morganton to reflect uh, the resources that are here in this community and take advantage of the great opportunities here to create a unique program that builds on what we've learned at, over, at NCSSM over 38 years. So I think you'll be very proud uh, to see what's uh, transforming here or, or what, what's being uh, built here in Morganton. I want to, uh, we have, uh, we're really fortunate to be able to, to start the, the presentation and Kevin Baxter will come on to walk through the plan in just a minute. But we wanted to start with about a seven minute video that uh, one of our alumni, class of 2011, put together. When he heard about this project, he and Kevin talked, and they looked at uh, an opportunity to sort of chronicle this project from beginning to end. And this first video really captures the project up to this point. So uh, Caleb Olawabi is the uh, alumnus who you'll meet after the video, but his 
production team has done a fantastic job of capturing the project to this point. And I think it's a great way to look back at what started uh, about eight months ago and brought us to this point. And then Kevin's gonna come on in just a minute and let you see some of the specifics about the plan uh, at this point. So this time, we'll roll the video. And again, I just wanna say thank you for being here tonight but more importantly, thank you for all your support uh, over the past nine months that allow us to be where we are today. Uh, we could not have done it without you, and we look forward to your, your continued involvement uh, and support as we move forward over the next four years to 2021 when we'll open the campus. So again, thank you so much. Founded in 1980, the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics is building its second campus due to open in Morganton in 2021. Let's follow project manager Kevin Baxter and his team as they survey the site, engage the community, and dream about new possibilities for this innovative model of STEM education. We opened our doors in 1980, and at that time we're the first school of, of this kind um, in, in the country and, and, and in the world even, which was a publicly funded residential high school focused on STEM. North Carolina was transitioning from that time from being agriculture and textile based primarily to more knowledge based. You know, the, the Research Triangle Park was up and coming, and so the goal was to think about how to how to make sure we have the, the talent in the state to grow uh, those industries um, as the state developed further, and so one of the strategies was to uh, provide this opportunity for students all over North Carolina. And so we bring students in from uh, all 13 congressional districts are, are involved in enrollment, and so that started in you know 1980, uh, and we opened the doors with 150 students in the junior class, and added 150 the next year, and, and this year we enroll 680 juniors and seniors in our residential program. Right off the top, the most exciting thing to me is that we're going to serve 300 more students. We've, we've hit capacity in, in Durham uh, for many years now. Uh, for about seven years, we've not been able to go beyond the, the capacity we were, the ceiling we reached with our student body. And so 300 more students a year beginning in 2021 are going to have a residential experience. We spoke with Vice Chancellor for Student Life, Terry Lynch, about the unique opportunities that come with building a new campus. And then for me, being able to have uh, sort of like a, a blank slate to create different structures, different systems, uh, and use the knowledge of what we do on the Durham campus, but perhaps do it slightly differently uh, for the Morganton campus. And that could be, you know, the layout of a residence hall, um, having more lounge spaces for the students to sort of gather, uh, the dining amenities for the students, the opportunity to engage with the, the Morganton community. Uh, those are real sort of neat opportunities that uh, because we're building a new campus, um, it, it gives you the opportunity to sort of think um, and be creative versus sort of doing the same things over and over again. A, a lot of times as an administrator, uh, you may be able to build a new building or build a new sort of suite. There, there's very few times where you're actually building a new campus um, and opening a new campus, and so that's really exciting. But we also see a tremendous opportunity to really build out an entirely new type of applied learning experience, uh, which could become a pilot that maybe finds its way back to Durham as well, where students get into the real world into advanced manufacturing settings and renewable energy development settings and uh, sustainable agriculture settings and all these different types of experiences where they can work alongside professionals in the field. It's really a, a tremendous opportunity to expand the mission of the school to serve more students across North Carolina and take advantage of the resources and opportunities that present themselves in that part of the state. Well the most exciting thing for me is the opportunity that I think it's going to bring to all of Western North Carolina. Obviously a great opportunity for Morganton of which I'm quite passionate about and I think about this is the hub and all the different educational opportunities that can happen. I think it changes the game in Western North Carolina for the value of education and the ability to, to increase the educational attainment in all of North Carolina, especially Western North Carolina. And Sally Sandy isn't the only one excited about the unique setting of Western North Carolina. 
The campus is going to be very different. I mean, it's going to be a little over three times the size in terms of the, the, the actual footprint of the campus, and it's going to have a, a much more uh, green space than the Durham campus does. And so that may impact our ability to do some things differently with the curriculum around environmental sciences, for example. Uh, given that School of Science of Math was the first of its type, and now we have the opportunity with the uh, UNC school system to develop that next university system. Uh, I would not be surprised that the other STEM organizations throughout the state, throughout the nation, we be looking at us and saying, well, how did you do this? And can we copy that from you? And that's going to be a model that we believe is, is forward-looking. Uh, it starts to respond to the, the interests of today's students uh, and also the interests of industry. So the students that we're looking for, they're intellectually curious, they're entrepreneurial, they're innovative in their thought processes, they're critical thinkers, and most importantly, I think, they are collaborative. They want to work with other students, they want to engage with faculty, they want to ask questions that have never been asked and answered before, and that creates an environment that helps them to thrive as an individual, but also as a community. I think when you really consider the mission of the school and you really look at the uh, realization of the mission to, to not just be an experience for the individual students who come, go through the program and then move on, but really the school's cumulative impact, I think when you look at the opportunity that we have through a second campus uh, in Morganton to, number one, increase the number of students who have the experience, but also look at the opportunity that it creates to, for us to impact in a different setting, in a different part of our you know, great state, uh, the extended opportunities that the school offices offers in terms of reaching out uh, and partnering with local communities all across the state. I got excited because of the amount of independent business that's thrown driving in Morganton and the surrounding areas, the amount of uh, corporate and industry kind of presence that has, over the last decade or so, really established themselves throughout the Unifor region uh, surrounding Burke County uh, and within Burke County. And so there's a lot of momentum in my mind in that part of the state. The need there is for someone to shine a spotlight on it. Grayson Cooper, an NCSSM alumnus, has served on the core planning team for the Western Campus. So the, the notion that we can have more students across the state have access to those kinds of caliber of experience that are going to give them a jump start, not only in terms of the content, but in terms of like what they're really curious about and interested in, um, is really exciting for me. Uh, we have tried to be as inclusive in our process as possible to maximize the inputs that affect the direction of the plan. And so as we built out the educational program plan and simultaneously the master facility plan for the site, what we've been doing is kind of collecting feedback that would direct or, or inform those plans. And on top of all that, what you have is you have a team, that same team, uh, Kevin Baxter's team, the Friday Institute, and due to pain, you would think that they've been together for 20 years doing this, but it's really been just six, seven, or eight months. They are a partnership, a, a collaboration, and they are working extremely well together. It's really impressive. We think that's a win-win. Uh, it's actually a win-win-win. It's a win for NCSSM, it's a win for the industries, and it's a win for the state of North Carolina. So we're excited about that in particular. So at, at this time, I'd like to invite Caleb Owalabi up to the stage just for a minute to get some recognition and also to tell us a little bit about what inspired him to um, do the video because he, he reached out to us and volunteered to do this um, and, and Caleb uh, owns a fashion house in, in Asheville and so uh, Caleb what inspired you to, to do this work? Thank you, Chancellor Roberts. Uh, first, let me say, you guys all look great, and that's coming from a fashion designer, so you should give yourselves a round of applause. I mean, honestly, absolutely. It's a really great question. I think, um, you know, I, I'm an alumni of NCSSM, um, the youngest of three brothers that went there, and it was actually at my sixth 
year uh, reunion uh, that I went and I was speaking with some of the original class of 86 and some of the other years. And, you know, it dawned upon me that, you know, all these men and women were giving in their certain ways. What are ways in which I could begin to give, you know, in my small way, in my start of my career? And so, you know, this idea came to me kind of um, like an epiphany, I guess you would say. <laughs> and it was just such a great idea, and I saw it, and I saw the idea that NCSSM and the STEMs were coming closer to the West, you know, where I grew up, and we were just branching out into all of North Carolina. And so to me, it just seemed like the perfect fit, um, the best idea. So I gathered up uh, one of the best production houses in all of Asheville, uh, Telescope Productions. Um, some of you have probably interviewed with Elijah, but what we did is we created, you know, a segue into hope, what we hope to be an ongoing web series. And so, you know, highlighting the stems, highlighting the sustainability that all of North Carolina shares. And uh, so, you know, I am privileged uh, to be a part of this and to be a part of a great legacy uh, in North Carolina School of Science and Math and now to say it's closer home. So I hope to be speaking with a lot of you as well and meeting you and I'm just thrilled. So thank you. <laughs> It'll be, it'll be great to chronicle this experience because I think as one of the, the folks on the, the video said that this has really not been done before, what we're doing here, so it'll be great to capture the process by how we get to uh, the campus in 2021. So at this point, I'd like to uh, introduce Kevin Baxter, who's the project director for this uh, particular uh, project that we're working on, and he was brought on in December, I mean in January, and has lived in uh, Morganton since then and has done an absolutely fabulous job of leading the, the core planning team uh, and working with um, our partners at Due to Pain and the Friday Institute and the Development Finance Initiative to uh, get us to this point. So at this point, please welcome Kevin Baxter. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. Well, they told me when I started in January, there's something about accepting the greater challenge, which is a bit of a tagline at NCSSM, and anytime you use AV, good grief, you accept the greater challenge. So uh, it, for those that are interested, we had a, a Wi-Fi blip, and it dropped our whole presentation, and then we had to recover, and uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's almost like being on a, um, a reality show to see if your presentation drops, <laughs> and then what happens next? You know, we'll see. So um, we are going to hope to show you some slides as we go through this, um, but if they do cut out, I'm just gonna start making th some things up and calling people in the audience up to the stage and we'll just talk about their vacations or interests and so on. So we'll see how this all works out. Uh, but again, thank you all for uh, being here today and for your interest in the project. Um, you know, the, look, see, this isn't even working. I don't know why I'm using this. So, uh, I can tell you that this has been an incredible experience for me personally, and it's been made all the more so by the reception in uh, Morganton, throughout Burke County, uh, within the, the Unifor region, and uh, really across Western North Carolina. Uh, we have had an exceptional amount of interest in this project since uh, at least January, if not going back years and years. Uh, that really originated with a few key champions. Uh, I, I cannot possibly call on everyone in this room who wrote a letter or called a legislator or uh, made a contribution or did anything that you possibly could to help uh, impact the selection of Morganton for the new campus. What I can do, uh, because I have a mic uh, up here, is acknowledge that we have an incredible uh, pair of legislators who represent us here in Burke County uh, with Senator Daniel and Representative Blackwell, and I believe both are in the room, and I just want to extend our appreciation to them for their tireless efforts to uh, beat the drum for this incredible campaign to bring NCSSM to Burke County uh, and to the Unifor region, and we, I think we all thank you very, very much for that work. So NCSSM is, is really, uh, you heard about this in the video, we, we really rely a lot on collaboration and on teams. 
Um, my team uh, in Morganton uh, is uh, supported by Kelly Lookadoo and Bliff McNeely. Uh, they will not be on stage. You will not see them up front waving. But I want you to know as members of this community and of this region that the event this evening uh, and all the work that's gone on to this point is not possible without their support as well. So if you come across them, uh, they would kill me if they knew I was talking about them. They're probably out in the lobby uh, setting up for something else. So just know that there is a great group of people working on this in Morganton. And there's a great group of people working on this in Durham. Uh, we have about 26 of our faculty, staff, and administrators here in Morganton today from the Durham campus. They are assembled in the front few rows, uh, and we appreciate them having made the trip out and really the incredible work they've done above and beyond a very full plate uh, in each uh, person's case to make this project uh, the best it possibly can be. So again, thanks to you all as well for all that you have done and continue to do for this project. Uh, as we, yes indeed, give them a round of applause. We're gonna, we're gonna try this one more time and upon realizing nothing happens, we're gonna ask Justine Davey. Anyone know Justine Davey? Come on out here, Justine. Yeah. This is Justine. She's an alumni, uh, an alumna of NCSSM and she had no idea this was about to happen. I'm gonna be asking Justine to help me behind the scenes. So she's gonna be toggling the slides as we go through since my clicker has been rendered useless. So if you can help us out, see if we can get through this or else it's gonna be a really interesting evening, okay? Thank you, Justine. And you can try your very hardest to advance the slide deck. Uh, and if that does not work, then we're going to make it. OK, look at that. We're back. We're going to talk about the color orange. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, there we go. OK. Aren't you glad you're not the one up on stage right now? Okay, so we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the project to give a full scope of really what all the work is that's happening at this point in time, how we've gotten to it. And I'm going to move through this rather quickly because I want to keep your attention and also make sure that everyone in this room and everyone joining us on live stream has a real appreciation for the amount of work that's gone on and what are the outputs or the outcomes from that work. So as you can see up on the, on the slide, we do have a number of recommendations that have been moving forward from this process. You heard Chancellor Roberts make reference to our core planning team who have been incredibly committed uh, to this process since January 30th. Uh, they have been, been engaged in a number of meetings and events as you heard. Their work has been to inform and advise the plans that flow forward to our Chancellor and our Board of Trustees. As you all know, you're represented in this part of the state with a number of uh, individuals on the core planning team. And we also have the talented folks back at NCSSM and in our alumni ranks and so on. They made such incredible time in doing their work that we got ahead of schedule right out of the gate. We found ourselves on May 26 being able to put forward to our Board of Trustees a site recommendation. Uh, for those who've been involved since the beginning, you know that we've been looking at that whole 800 acre parcel of land uh, between Berkmont Avenue and Enola Road. And uh, it was a lot of work that had to go into that, particularly from our colleagues at Due to Pain Architects. The outcome of that process was really, um, spoiler alert, to look at the School for the Deaf's Eastern Ridge. Uh, that emerged without question as the top selection for our, our team and for our campus. And it was not because of um, the fact it was just an educational partner at the School for the Deaf. That was important to us. We value that relationship. Uh, we see a lot of opportunities on both sides of that relationship to be engaged and to do some collaborative um, uh, activities together, collaborative curriculum potentially, shared facilities, all sorts of opportunities to make the very best outcomes for both programs. But also, just to our south is Western Piedmont Community College. And Western Piedmont, that's where I call home, that's my office is at Western Piedmont. And their whole team, Dr. Helmick, through their administration has been incredibly supportive uh, in also trying to realize from their perspective how we can partner with the community college, uh, which is something we've not done a lot of at NCSSM in Durham. Uh, so this is a really neat opportunity for our institution to be looking at ways to engage the community college system and to have a partner like Western Piedmont literally out our back door when we open this campus is gonna be an incredible opportunity, not just for us, but for Western Piedmont as well. So that connectivity to educational partners is critical. We also looked at everything from green space to space to grow the campus over time, if that was the direction we'd intended to go. We looked at uh, the existing facilities, the opportunities to stay on our timeline, because we're very sensitive to that in this community, are we not? That's right. 
So we are going to make sure 2021, this campus is going to open, or we'll have a new person in my shoes, and probably in Todd's too, for that matter. So we're going to make sure we open it by 2021. He's crying backstage. Uh, so we, we, uh, we are very much looking forward to accelerating this work now that we have that site selection. The board unanimously approved it. And then we moved forward to September, uh, to this month really, with two recommendations in mind. If you've been having trouble falling asleep at night, you would have gone onto our website to find about 200 pages of reports about this project that have flown, uh, been sent up to our board of trustees for their review and consideration. Uh, that uh, set of reports, uh, one is an educational program report that our colleagues at the Friday Institute at NC State University have authored alongside of our core planning team. The second report is the master plan for the campus that was authored by Judah Payne Architects. Each of those are really the, um, the substantive elements of what is moving forward to the Board of Trustees tomorrow at their meeting here in Morganton. Uh, we hope that they will uh, approve those recommendations, and if they do, we will have our blueprints in place to move forward for the next four years with the build out, not only physically of the campus, but also in terms of our educational structure, the intersections we're going to pursue with private industry, with institutions for higher education, K-12, as well as back to Durham and NCSSM. So really exciting uh, opportunities are ahead. We can advance the next slide, Justine, and see some great pictures up here that really are representative of some of the engagement that we've tried to pursue as an institution as we've gone through this process. Uh, we've had a number of opportunities, not just here in Morganton and Burke County, but really from all the way out in Cullowhee and Dillsboro, through to Asheville, down to Charlotte, up to Boone and Blowing Rock, over to Hickory and Winston-Salem. Tremendous enthusiasm and interest from the entirety of Western North Carolina in this project. I think there's a, a recognition, not that this will dramatically alter the landscape or that it would all of a sudden change um, the values of this place that we all treasure, but rather it will be a catalyst and you heard me reference that in the video, trying to shine a light on all the incredible things that are already happening in West North Carolina. And we are in a really neat position at NCSSM where we have every opportunity to work with every different you know, sector across the landscape. We can work with K-12, we can work with higher ed, we're not competing with those institutions. We can work with our partners in business and industry and we can begin, we hope, to really generate a lot of enthusiasm for folks to lo locate themselves in this part of the state, uh, to contribute in this part of the state, and also to make some more blended lines between sectors so that really we have this opportunity to engage the full community kind of writ large across Western North Carolina. You know, we went out to uh, Dillsboro to meet with the folks at the Green Energy uh, Park and some of the incredible things they're doing to blend uh, public projects with community art as well as with trying to um, use some, some methane that's coming off an old landfill. It's incredibly innovative. Uh, you would never know it was there unless you, you happen to cross somebody and now it's a premier opportunity for us to have a partnership with them at NCSSM for summer programs potentially, for um, art programs uh, that go out for excursions and so on. And it's been great to be in this role for the last nine months because I've had the opportunity and the excuse, really, to go out and learn about all the incredible things going on in this part of the state. Ridden around in a pickup truck at Biltmore Estate, looking at their sustainability programs. Uh, went over and met with folks in the high-tech sector in Hickory at their data center conference. Uh, been up to Appalachian State to learn about uh, New River Power and Light and the incredible things that they're doing with some seed funding from the UNC system. So there's just tremendous opportunity for us to take full advantage of. We also want to pull in our alumni. We want to pull in our stakeholders at NCSSM in Durham uh, so that we can really begin to have some opportunities for the overall the state to benefit from our institution even more than they do today. The, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out to you, for better or worse, there's a question link at the top. It's online, so who knows where those questions will end up tonight. Uh, but our intention, our intention is that you visit that link as we go through the presentation if you have any questions that you'd like to see answered. And when we find that, that page in a few years, we will answer those questions uh, as quickly as we can. And, and we'll make sure that you are, you are heard eventually, uh, if not in the moment. Um, as we get into the, the substance of the program, we're going to start first with the educational program plan. 
and while I'm up here on stage, I want it to be maybe very clear that I had a very uh, small role, if any, in the educational program plan or the master plan. Uh, I've been in a facilitating role, and the work has really gone on at the Friday Institute, at Due to Pain, and with our core planning team in particular. Um, so as we go through this, just recognize that you have a number of folks here in the room who are resources that you can engage uh, this evening, if you're so inclined, to ask them follow-up questions as well. Um, the, the, the educational program vision was a, was a big question when it started. It was, how expansive is this question? We've got nine months to work with, which is not a lot of time. And we've got some really serious questions to, to pose because there's not many institutions across the country where they say we want to build a second campus which is seen as an equal to the first. Not an extension, not an, some outpost in another part of the state or another part of the country, but an equal. And when you raise that opportunity in that way, you really are challenged to really question the way the institution operates in some ways, to see how can we, how can we convey elements to two places, uh, and what should be conveyed and what should be distinct. And as the core planning team worked with the Friday Institute, they arrived at an academic vision statement, which is, it notes it's proposed because it's going to the board tomorrow. Uh, they really hit three guiding principles, and it is kind of the perfect marriage of, of borrowing from and adhering to the legacy of our institution a hard-earned legacy from 38 years of success that's been operating in Durham and then more recently with our tremendous online program. Preserving those values and identifying what is, what is part of our DNA in Durham and on, online with our institution and making sure that we are absolutely bringing those elements to Morganton. However, we also acknowledge there's an opportunity for some flexibility here. Durham and Morganton are not exactly the same. There's a little bit of a, a subtle difference between the two communities. Uh, and if you look at what surrounds each of those communities, it's a very different footprint of industry, uh, of educational institutions. There's strengths in both places, but they're not you know, mirror images of one another. And so we don't want to approach this in a way that requires us to follow the same precise approach in a different place. And so as a result, there's been this recognition that we uh, want to have differentiating flexibilities exist for the Morganton campus. For example, uh, we have a tremendous, tremendous mentorship program where our students are going out, uh, many of whom are going to Duke University and UNC and NC State and North Carolina Central University and engage in tremendous research experiences uh, with faculty members there. Those are literally in the backyard of our campus. It's not very difficult uh, for students to access those opportunities in a very proximate way to where NCSSM is located. So when we look at Morganton, certainly we can work and we intend to very directly with UNC Charlotte, UNC Asheville, Western Carolina, Appalachian State, and our private institutions like Montreat College and Winston, uh, uh, Wake Forest and so on. But again, it's not as though you can go there for just an hour and a half or, or four hours of your day. It might take you an hour and a half to get to some of these places, right? And so we're trying to call that question, how do we do this? Do we force that model or do we have a different model in place? And that's where these flexible opportunities really come into play. We are able to then have a very different opportunity to call that question again and look at it as if, as if we can rethink a, another option for the institution. And what might emerge is something that goes back to Durham or goes back to our online program as a second or a third model in how we approach something like mentorship. When we look at some of the other areas of the report, it's very dense, but because there's a tremendous amount of information that needs to be shared, we try to distill it down to a couple of different areas here. There are a number of guiding academic principles, and we only selected two. I mentioned our mentorship program. We're also looking at the Morganton campus as an opportunity to have what we started calling a Center for Teaching Excellence, but what has evolved into this idea of a teaching and learning innovation collaboratory. It's a much cooler name, I think, first of all. Uh, it's also something that could be distinct. It would not be seen uh, necessarily as uh, precisely the same thing as what's happening at the North Carolina Center for the Advancement of Teaching or at our colleges and universities in this region who have colleges of education dedicated to some of these very things. Rather, we see our role and our place in this community as having an opportunity to engage with all of those players in a way that we could spearhead some new and exciting professional development opportunities for educators across the state, certainly in this region, 
and also have some opportunities where we can extend NCSSM in a different way into some of our partners across the UNC system to look at everything from student teacher exchanges as a possibility uh, to a research agenda that would be um, explored through the teaching center. So very exciting, a new opportunity for our institution that can happen through the Morganton campus. We see the structure of the school calling a number of questions ranging from the governance of the school and how that looks and operates uh, to the, the residential environment. And here are two examples of things that we, we intend to pursue. One is to have a living and learning environment that is distinct here in Morganton that really allows for a 24 seven residentially um, inspired education model and our students have a very different kind of feel than they might in Durham. Now if there's Durham alumni in the room, I promise you we are not gonna give them carte blanche to go out into the, the community after sunset uh, or anything that would look uh, wildly different than it does in present day in Durham. Rather, we're looking at the way our facilities build out, the way our campus is oriented, and the way in which we um, identify and select personnel for the campus that can support a, a somewhat more uh, efficient model, but also one that, that leverages the power of the place. We have an incredible environment around this campus, right? And we want to take full advantage of that. Finally, you see external partnerships. If you're in the room, by, most of you have already been engaged in some way with the campus, and that's reflective of our goal to try to bring the public sector and the private sector uh, to the table for this conversation. Uh, one of the ways we see as an opportunity of doing that would be to have a uh, public and private space uh, where you might see incubators, you might see um, research bubbling up, uh, but most importantly, you would see a, a collection of talent. You would see students from NCSM, faculty from NCSSM, we would hope community members, whether they're um, youth or, or thriving adults who are doing great in business and industry, uh, and then our partners in business and industry who can bring their brain power and their capacity and their resources uh, into the conversation. You see this happening in a lot of uh, large urban areas uh, where you have these, these incredible like American Underground and, and so on and so forth where you have this collection of talent that is incredible to, um, to stimulate startup activity and to provide particularly our youth with the appropriate amount of guidance to help push them uh, to reach their full capacity. We wanna try that in Morganton in a very different way uh, and in a way that might be contiguous to our campus. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You can see that we have a number of defining features. I'm not gonna read them all because most have, have probably heard these before. The, the two or three I'll call out. We are calling this NCSSM Morganton uh, to make sure that people are clear which campus we're talking about uh, as we get through the planning process over the next four years. We will serve 150 high school juniors in our first class in fall 2021. Uh, that class will be followed the next year by a second class of 150 students who would join that junior class, and so you'd have 300 in the full complement. 150 juniors, 150 seniors. Everyone gets a little stuck on, will it be 300 that first year? The answer is no. It will be 150 in fall 2021, full build out the following fall, fall 2022. Uh, and then finally, we will also have a number of opportunities uh, on this campus to realize some efficiencies within our institution and across our partnerships in the region. Uh, within our institution, you'll see things like a standardized academic calendar, standardized admissions requirements, uh, and standardized kind of um, uh, course offerings that serve as really our core curriculum. We'll build out around that in some exciting ways, but you will still find sp science, mathematics, humanities, uh, engineering, computer science very much at play and in effect in Morganton just as it is in Durham. The two campuses are not too far apart. It takes about two and a half hours. I've done it once or twice. Uh, it's an easy ride, it's a beautiful ride. It's more beautiful if you're coming west than going east, in my opinion. Uh, but it's still uh, splendid. And what you can see is that it's not such a tremendous difference that it can't be overcome. Think about today in Durham, how we have students who are coming into that program from Murphy and coming into it from Ocracoke, from all over the state. And that's a tremendous distance for some, and it's very close for others. It will be precisely the same in Morganton. We very much are adhering to the, uh, the institutional value, which is to promote that diversity across our state. We want students from Ocracoke and Morganton. We want students in Murphy and in Morganton. We want students from Morganton and Morganton. Uh, you know, we want to make sure we have the same type of diversity where we can look at all 100 counties and say there's a place for you at NCSSM. This is just going to be that many more seats that we can offer for our residential program, and we're excited to be able to distribute it across both campuses. This is probably 
somewhat difficult to read, especially if you're in the back. But I'll explain real quick. This is, this is some guiding information that was employed by our team at Due to Pain as they approached the master plan, as they really thought through what does the program look like on this Morganton campus? What is it we're looking to accommodate in terms of the curriculum uh, that's emerging, in terms of the uh, extracurricular activities for students, the residential environment, uh, and the student community that we want to promote? And so they did an inventory, really, of all these different areas and made sure that as they worked through our campus master plan, these items all had a home in that master plan. Uh, and they do, I can assure you. And so know that it's not um, at such a high level at the master planning point that we haven't given thought to the specifics of our experience. We have, we just can't tell you exactly which room on which floor of which building the physics lab is going to be yet. That's work to come in the, in the months ahead. This, this is a map that I think the spirit of it is important to note, and the spirit is that, that we are a member of a community, or a member of a number of communities. This is the, this pentagon-shaped area, if it's not familiar to you, is the 800 acres uh, that I mentioned earlier with I-40 on the southern point that runs along the horizontal area there, and then Enola Road uh, on the right side and Berkmont Avenue on the left. This is, is a collection of public agencies uh, that are on this land uh, with a tremendous amount of um, existing resources to work from, whether it's the School for the Deaf, Western Piedmont Community College, uh, the County Agricultural Extension, the Bur uh, Broughton Hospital. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities to, to build some partnerships. But there's a lot of undeveloped land on this site as well. And uh, the Reimagining Broughton project that the Department of Commerce is engaged in is something that we are excited about, that we are supportive of. Uh, and we are at the table just alongside our partners on the site in discussing opportunities with that project. This map calls attention with orange uh, flags or squares to already known resources uh, in our educational uh, district, so to speak, on the uh, western side of the property where we see already facilities that are in place at the School for the Deaf in Western Piedmont that could be ripe for partnership, uh, just as they see on our campus plan as being built out, new facilities that will be created that may be ripe for partnership for their students and faculty and staff. And so we have been working very hard as a collaborative group to try to make sure that we are aware of these, in particular because the last thing we want to do on our new campus for 300 students is build an auditorium with precious resources that we need to use very wisely. If there's an auditorium sitting 100 yards away at the School for the Deaf, there's an auditorium sitting 300 yards away at Western Piedmont Community College, and oh, by the way, there's an auditorium that we could all walk to from the campus right here. And so we're trying to be very thoughtful about understanding what exists in close proximity and not duplicating our efforts where they, uh, that can be avoided. So this is an aerial site overview of the School for the Deaf. Um, the School for the Deaf, Again, I, I've said this a few times, but their partnership is very important to us. Um, we have not just spoken with their director. We've spoken a lot with their director, Audrey Garvin, who I'm sure is in the room somewhere, and we appreciate her support very much. But also, uh, each of their different affinity groups, whether it is their foundation board, or whether it is their historical museum, or their alumni association, uh, or their administrators, whatever it may be, uh, because each has a different, slightly different perspective on not just the school, but also the opportunities that our arrival to Morganton has um, for the School for the Deaf as well. And so we've been working alongside them to understand what is the history on this site, uh, what are some of the treasured elements of this site on the grounds that we need to be respectful of and make sure we are attentive to in our planning process. And then also, what are the areas of the site that really are not <laughs> historical or, or tell that story that maybe can come down uh, to make way for new, new construction, new green space, new community space? And so as we look at the site, uh, you can see at the top of the site uh, is the core campus for the School for the Deaf, very much in use today and thriving with their student enrollment uh, and their programs that they do throughout the year. The lower half of the picture is what we've identified as the eastern ridge on this site. Uh, this is as it sits today, and so you can see a number of buildings represented on that site, uh, not all of which are uh, necessarily within our plan. In particular, we're looking at three buildings as really opportune for adaptive reuse. So it is very much our intention to uh, reuse and breathe new life into the historic cattle barn, uh, which you see on the furthest to the left on this uh, slide, 
as well as Joyner Hall, uh, which is the one in the center with the green boundary, and Goodwin Hall, which is to the right of it. These are historically significant structures. Uh, the architecture is spectacular for these buildings, uh, and they tell a story, and we want to protect that story and invest in that story, and we will. And so we are going to put elements of our program into these three facilities. Now you'll note I did not speak about the others. There's no green boundaries around the other ones. Uh, the other buildings that you see represented, we do intend to bring down. And the reason for that is to make way for new buildings and or green space uh, that would be available to our students and faculty and also in different cases available to our partners uh, on the educational district and throughout the community. The orientation of our campus as it's envisioned by the Due to Pain team, which we have fully bought into, is really to leverage kind of this axis that exists. And if you're familiar with that part piece of land, if you look at the main building for the School for, Deaf, for the Deaf, which is just a gorgeous structure, um, and its orientation to Avery Hall, which is over uh, on the Broughton Hospital site, between the two is Goodwin Hall. And so Goodwin Hall uh, is the building that has the arrows to the north, and, or I guess that'd be the west and the east of it, uh, on the map. And that really seems to us to be a point where we can really um, connect with our neighbors uh, architecturally and in terms of our campus orientation, but really a point to then build out from in each direction. And so we see a centerpiece of our site as Goodwin Hall, uh, and that would be in our minds where our main administration would be located for the school um, on this campus, and it would have buildings in every direction from that. And so when we start to actually drop those onto the map, first of all, you'll notice a lot more green space because we've removed the buildings that we would intend to clear, and you'll see two facilities which really are part of the central neighborhood uh, that are flanking um, both sides of Goodwin Hall. We see that as the major elements of our, our kind of student community, student commons uh, in the center of our campus. And so one of those buildings is intended to be uh, truly a student commons facility that would integrate uh, dining as well as the library and media center, as well as student study space and activity space and meeting space, and bring all of that together under one roof in a very kind of open concept. And on the other side, the second building we see is a wellness facility where we could try something new for us at NCSSM, which is to bring our wellness programs and uh, professionals together in one space. So our counseling department and those professionals together with our athletics uh, uh, professionals as well, our um, studio space for everything from, I just mentioned yoga or my wife would kill me, from yoga uh, to uh, whatever else people do for exercise. I don't know myself, but I hear it's a wonderful... <laughs> Wonderful thing. Uh, and then we would also uh, be looking to include uh, a small multi-purpose gym for um, recreational use, not for um, athletic competitions. And so really having these two facilities flanking the main uh, Goodwin Hall uh, would provide that really major um, neighborhood in the center. And then as you build out from there, all of a sudden you see some new buildings. And what you see pictured on the map right now represents the extent of our phase one concept. So when we open in fall 2021, we really hope we can open with the campus looking as it does on this map. What you would see as you go down the, the, the spine of the campus, I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but I want to point out that there's probably a few savvy people in the room who are thinking, Kevin, that's not the center of the campus. That's the end point of the campus. What are you talking about? I know that. Goodwin Hall is in the, is in the center in a different scheme. Uh, in this scheme, it really is on one end point of our construction that goes from Goodwin all the way down to the barn. But as you look at the, the full master plan and how it could be realized if we expanded to serve, say, 600 students uh, over some amount of time after we opened, all of a sudden you see Goodwin in that central element space, that central neighborhood, and it would be able to serve residential and academic spaces on both sides of the campus um, in either direction. So we're really thinking long term here and trying to be very strategic with how we uh, are able to build out the program. So what are these buildings? What is going to happen on this campus? Uh, you can see some of the functions represented here, and I will start down at the barn and note that um, this is a building we're very excited about. I just said, finished talking about how we would not have an auditorium uh, per se on our campus. However, we do see the uh, barn serving some of that function. Uh, we understand that it can seat uh, about 400 people in that facility uh, in the, the plans that are being drawn up by Due to Pain. 
Uh, we're thinking about a mezzanine in there, a prep kitchen on the bottom floor, uh, some storage space so that you really could, could, could modify that space on an as-needed basis for everything from lectures to academic competitions uh, to uh, student events to community events. And so we really see a neat opportunity to leverage that space in a way that can serve a number of different uses for our students and faculty and staff, but also have a, a, an opportunity to serve this region as well for different activities. Uh, as you go up from the barn, you see some dorms uh, that are located. Um, there are two dorms that have a connected element in the center. Uh, one uh, would be envisioned as serving about 150 uh, students, uh, probably would all the males would be in one and all the females in the other. Uh, and so about 150 beds in each building. Uh, and that would kind of wind up past an academic building. Uh, the academic building is where we position most of our labs and classrooms. Uh, not all, but most. And then as you continue up the spine there, you would get to that student common space, the Goodwin Hall building, and uh, the wellness facility as well. And then if you continued up the spine in phase two, you would see two more dorms, uh, additional academic space, and at that point, an auditorium, uh, because that would pre present a challenge to have about 750 seats needed, uh, as that really doesn't match up with the other resources in the community. So that's something we would park in phase two. This is a different way of looking at it by neighborhood. Uh, so again, in the center of it, you see the commons, and then on either side, living learning villages that would include academic and residential space, and then the barn at the, the southern point there. This is something that probably, it's, it may not seem like an exciting slide, but it's the one I'm most excited by in the whole deck. And the reason is uh, because it really helps to tell a story of what the art of the possible is on this land. Uh, what you see here is certainly the, 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 the structures that we intend to build out on the ridge line, but you also see some pretty um, intentional connectivity to School for the Deaf, to the, to, the, uh, to the west, and to the Western Piedmont Community College to the south. We are envisioning a new roadway that would come in off of Berkmont um, and be able to serve not just our campus, but also be, uh, serve as an additional entrance for the School for the Deaf and an additional entrance for Western Piedmont Community College. Uh, something that we could all share, that it would give all three programs good visibility off of I-40, um, and also for emergency services and, and security reasons to give us all multiple entrances is something that we, we all desire. Um, you can see a connection to a greenway system. Uh, if you're a savvy Morganton resident, you're saying that doesn't exist today. It's a proposed greenway extension that would run along Hunting Creek. Uh, along the uh, entire length of the district, and we would very much want to connect our campus to that greenway uh, in a way that made it accessible publicly. The, the line that encircles the ridge line, which is our campus, is, a, is envisioned as a one mile loop. Um, and that has a couple of functions. For one thing, we can use it to tell students, you know, here's, here's a, a boundary line to know that by sunset you need to be inside that line. Uh, just like in, on our campus in Durham, very important that they're back on campus by sunset, no matter what time of the year it is. They love us in December. And so uh, what you can see with that boundary line uh, is it also has the opportunity to, to connote some of the wellness elements that we're really excited about on this campus. It'll be a publicly available trail uh, that could be used for walking, potentially for biking, and again, connecting to the Greenway spine uh, as that's realized. So again, uh, community amenity that we can leverage. And then here you see the whole district and, and the way that the, the roadways are, are mapped out on there, uh, as well as the opportunity to help push our students and faculty toward downtown. Uh, they're not uh, permitted in Durham to bring cars on campus. Uh, so that's an assumption we're making today that it would very likely be the same in, in Morganton. Uh, so they'll be out and about on, on public transit or on bikes and on a foot, um, exploring the community uh, and the region. This is a um, really inspiring quote that I can't read from here. Um, hopefully you all can. It's, uh, it really <laughs> speaks to the sustainability theme that certainly as an institution of, of the state, it's a priority to make sure that we are engaged in some sustainable programs uh, that will create some efficiencies for our institution, but it goes much beyond that. If you look around this landscape, if you look around this region, you see so many emerging opportunities to connect to what's happening in private industry and in the public sector with renewable energy, with sustainable agriculture, uh, with trying to invent the next best thing that can really promote the environment around us and protecting that environment. Our students are very passionate about that. Uh, we have some incredible sustainability programs already in place at our institution in Durham. 
Uh, we want to take that to the next step, potentially here in Morganton, and to use the build out of this campus uh, to do that. So as we look at the next steps uh, for the planning process, what you see here is we've got a lot of work to do. This seems like a, this is a milestone. This is a point of celebration. Uh, it's really coming, people, I promise you. And it's coming in just a few short years. But in spite of the fact that we're celebrating today, we have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us for the next four years. That needs to happen as we build out our program and build out our facilities. And what you can see referenced here is that just in the next few months alone, we're going to be making some recommendations to our board, submitting our master plan to the state construction office to keep us uh, on schedule with our construction timeline, uh, getting into schematic design with our partners at Due Pain, so we understand exactly how that program is going to um, uh, manifest itself in the buildings being developed on our campus, select a construction manager at risk, which will happen in the next few months, We'll be doing some additional site visits to look at facilities and programs that exist around the country that can inform the design of our programs here in Morganton. Completing an asset inventory. Uh, we've been engaging the De Development Finance Initiative at the UNC School of Government to look at an eight county area that, that looks all over this region to understand exactly what, and we coldly call them assets, but what partnerships are ripe to explore. And so we're looking at the educational setting, we're looking at the business industry side, the public sector, and so on. And it's really an, an incredible canvassing that's already yielded more than 10,000 uh, items uh, or enterprises that we can establish um, some relationships with potentially. And then we're going to begin, most importantly, to operational, operationalize elements of the plan that have been um, developed and that we voted on tomorrow to build out our curriculum, to build out our student experience, and to do so in a way that is congruent with, but still allows for some distinction from our Durham campus. So with that, um, we have a, why don't we do this? Uh, I think it would be good to um, pivot to a microphone down here. I'm gonna ask uh, Sophie Williams, who picked the wrong seat, if she can come right over here and grab this microphone. Um, and Sophie, we're gonna give this to you, okay? This is how we're gonna do it, folks. Sophie's got the chancellor's phone, I think, so we'll see what happens. Uh, now's the time to make your budget requests if you're in the first three rows. Um, what you can see on the top is a link. And what I'm, what I'm seeing on there is there's already questions, so it's working. So if you I have a question and you would like to drop it in there, Sophie will read the question on the microphone so everybody can hear it. And then from there, we will bring up the experts to answer it. As we prepare to do this, I want to invite two specific experts up to the stage, and that is uh, Darren Lathan uh, from Duda Payne and Trip Stallings from the Friday Institute. These guys have worked tirelessly for nine months on all the work that's gone into this project. Uh, they are much better equipped than I to respond to some of your questions, and they will also, with, along with me, engage as needed other members of the team uh, or from their consultant teams as well. So you guys can walk through that door. If you end up at um, a bottle shop, you've gone the wrong way. So just go up the stairs, there you go. And uh, we're gonna ask Sophie if she will start us off here. Is that microphone operational? All right. Can you hear me? First question um, from Isaac Crouch. Are there any plans to provide public transportation to and from downtown in order to connect the two areas? Isaac. Well done, Isaac. Citizen Earth Media. Everybody listen to them. Where's Isaac at? How you doing, Isaac? Very appreciative of their support. Um, I'll answer this one, uh, and that is to say we, we are intending to um, uh, pursue that. We're working, we actually were involved with a grant request that went forward from the Western Piedmont Council of Governments that involved the city, the county, Western Piedmont Community College, a number of other stakeholders to look at a, an establishment of a pilot bus route uh, that would actually run right alongside this campus uh, and, and go all across the region. Um, and, and we're still working on funding for that, uh, but we are supportive of that project. Uh, we're hoping within four years that is able to gain traction and emerge as a real opportunity. Beyond that, we do maintain our own vehicles at NCSSM, uh, so we can take teams to their events or to their academic competitions, uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a multiple ways we can approach that, but I would say to all the members of the community who are here, um, as you're looking at public uh, transportation options to serve the communities across the Unifor region, uh, please keep us up to date in ways we can be supportive of those uh, innovative 
requests so that we can be a player at the table and help lend any support we can to those ideas. So yes, very much so we are pursuing that. Next question. Are there going to be opportunities relating to online students at this campus? The focus of the curriculum is different, so will that mean more classes are being offered? Yeah, I'm just gonna say yes to that question, and I'm actually gonna ask Tripp uh, if he can just provide a little bit of a snapshot around how this conversation is uh, bubbled up in our core planning team and, and where there are some emerging areas that we see um, some opportunity uh, to engage our distance education division and our online program on the Morganton campus. Thanks, Kevin. Now, as Kevin has said earlier, a lot of this is uh, early stages, so we can say uh, possibilities but not certainties. The way the conversation has evolved is to think about ways in which uh, students can be connected across campuses between Durham and Morganton, both synchronously and asynchronously, but also how can we expand uh, the very large footprint of the existing uh, distance learning uh, program that already is part of the School of Science and Mass offerings. And uh, in addition to that, something that uh, Darren brought up when we were talking about the design of the building, this, was, this is more of a, an aesthetic thing, but it was kind of a cool idea. As technology expands and extends, we're thinking about ways to visually link the campuses also so that perhaps we'd even have uh, spaces where students of the Durham campus and students of the Morganton campus would be able to see each other in action uh, across uh, their, their link-ups. Um, there's a number of different opportunities and a number of different possibilities here. And one of the things that's most important to keep in mind is how uh, the campus expansion here uh, allows for an expansion of that distance learning uh, process. I think there's more uh, uh, potential here than we've even realized yet, but there are quite a few ways that this group, especially the, I see a lot of core planning team members here in front of me uh, who have thought through how to make uh, the most of the opportunities for distance learning here. And that's not just for students, but also for uh, teachers as well. Kevin mentioned earlier that the idea that uh, the core planning team had to develop uh, a collaboratory for teaching and learning. And that's gonna require not just a physical space, but also a digital presence as well. So a lot of different opportunities. One of our, uh, one of our uh, 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 folks at the Friday Institute who helped us think through some of the tech infrastructure noted, and we kind of laughed at first, but it's serious. He said, we need to be thinking about planning this space to accommodate internet connectivity or network connectivity for up to seven devices per person on the campus. And we laughed a little bit, but when you sit and think about all the things in your life right now that are connected, I, I'm a technical, technology Luddite a little bit. I came up with four or five just for me. And his point was that we're going to be rapidly expanding all the different ways in which we connect. So the campus itself, as a living space, is going to have a number of different ways to connect, not just through classrooms and online learning, but also through uh, more social aspects of that as well. So that's kind of a, uh, an overview of all the different ways that we thought about not just uh, online learning taking place, but also the connectivity across campuses and across the state. What can you share about how teachers will be brought on? Where will they be coming from? We, we have built out a, a projected personnel uh, plan for the new campus where we would see, uh, and this is inclusive of, of both the uh, faculty and the staff, but we would see um, a need to bring on about 100 new positions uh, by the time we open the campus. And those are, you know, across the gamut um, uh, for all functions that need to be served by the institution. Uh, when we look at the, the faculty positions, uh, we would see our first step as being to identify some leaders to build out the curriculum uh, on site here in Morganton. And so one of our first asks for uh, operating support will be uh, to identify uh, a few individuals that can come in to begin to build out some of the plan uh, for how the curriculum uh, manifests itself in Morganton. And then as we get much, much closer to opening day, so probably in no earlier than 2020, I would imagine, we would look to start um, recruiting and hiring the, the balance of the faculty um, so that they had uh, ideally a year uh, on site to, to, to build out the curriculum, the, rem the remaining parts of the curriculum, and then, you know, begin to do their work uh, on site. And so um, we, we will be doing national, you know, open searches, uh, and so we would be eager to have applicants from all sectors, and I can tell you that Chancellor Roberts and I here on basically a weekly basis, and I have since I got to the job in January from individuals who've heard about the project as far away as California and Oregon and uh, in, the, in the Midwest and so on who want to work here and want to come here. And so that's inspiring, um, and we know that there's a huge talent pool out there that's 
a lot of whom are coming from uh, institutions of higher education, uh, some from K-12, and, and some from private business and industry as well. So uh, it will be an open process. We'll, we'll be working very hard to make sure that information is pushed out broadly um, when the time comes in the months ahead. How will admissions look for students who apply? Will they pick either the Durham or Morganton campus? The, the, one of the defining features is to standardize our admissions model as we do today. If you apply to NCSSM, you have a choice. Uh, the two um, uh, programs that run throughout the academic year, you have NCSSM online, uh, and then you also have our residential program in Durham. And so students can apply to both of those, uh, but they have to tell us which is their top choice. And so that would be the pool they'd enter first for consideration. Uh, we would be a third option here in Morganton. And so students, again, would apply to the institution. They would apply to NCSSM. And then at the point of application, make a decision about how many of the programs they wanted to compete for and which one would be their top choice. If they were going to go with all three, which would be top, which would be their second choice, and which would be their third choice. We will not consider students for either campus who don't want to be considered for that place. And so if a student applies and only wants to be considered for Durham, they would reside in that pool. We would never look at them for Morganton and vice versa. And so um, we would do that in a standardized way that follows current practice for the institution. This is from Kevin McCloy. He asks, the curriculum will obviously focus on STEM, but are there plans to have innovative humanities curricular opportunities as well? Is that from Elizabeth Moose? Who said that? Kevin McCloy. <laughs> Kevin uh -huh. McCloy. Okay. She's misrepresenting herself. Uh, Elizabeth Moose, Moose is our Dean of Humanities who's in the room, and she's the greatest champion for humanities you will ever find or meet, and she's spectacular. We have an incredible humanities program uh, that operates in uh, Durham. As I understand it, uh, it actually offers more courses than any other um, discipline. Maybe that, I don't know if that's right or not, but that, that's what we say, so, you know, good for you, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> I, could, I could tell you that the uh, intention is across the entire curriculum to leverage existing um, elements that are in Durham. So some things would, would follow us to Morganton and other pieces would be built new. Um, so there will be innovation in every area um, that can support Morganton, but also can feed back into our Durham campus and into our online program as well. So uh, yes, in humanities, we will pursue that, but also across all the other disciplines as well. Will there be any interface with homeschool organizations? Oh, that's a good question. Trip. <laughs> You see how this works, right? <laughs> that is not something that's come up in our conversations uh, with the core planning team, but it's that kind of thing, though. I want to use this as an opportunity to talk about the role that you guys are going to be playing in the next four years. The educational program vision is a plan that tells the School of Science and Math or gives the School of Science and Math some direction on what should be done, who should do it, and when it should happen, but not how. And these next four years are a really important time for this community to start investing in helping this school figure out the how. And a question like that, which hasn't come up yet, is the kind of thing that they're going to need to really expand and think about what is the potential here. So I don't have an answer for you. I'm not going to make one up for you because we haven't talked about it. But the mere fact that it's come up is an indication that you're ready to engage with this school on figuring out what things like that are going to look like. Currently in the, the Durham campus, uh, we have homeschool students that are involved in a number of different ways. First of all, they can apply to attend the school, um, and we have many homeschool students who end up in our uh, online program, for example. But we also have online uh, um, homeschool students who participate on our robotics team uh, in the local area. They come in or are part of the robotics team at NCSSM. Uh, so there's a number of different ways that that happens through various programs currently in Durham. So we would assume that. Uh, that would be similar here, and as Tripp said, there may be new opportunities that we have yet to think about. What are some of the coolest examples of student or community interactions at the Durham campus, and how do you foresee students interacting with the community here in Burke County? It's from Anna Russ. I'm going to ask Chancellor Roberts if he can give a good example from the Durham campus of a, a really neat community interaction our students have. Uh, if you can briefly respond to that question. Uh, there's um, different ways, both we talk about the mentorship program where they're going out and specifically being involved in a, uh, with a business or a school or, or a variety of different learning opportunities, but there's also uh, through service. There's a service requirement for NCSSM students, there's 60 hours, and so they do that in their home community, but they also 
do it in the Durham community in a number of different ways. For example, tutoring at local elementary schools. They, um, they work with the local food bank um, to collect food and distribute the food. So there's a number of different service opportunities that they get out to uh, into the community, um, as well as uh, you know, some just begin to start their own business there. And I would say in, on this campus, we would, we would see opportunities. You know, we've visited with the team at, at uh, CHS Blue Ridge to talk about opportunities at the hospital for students on the service side, but also on the research and mentorship side. Uh, there's some really neat opportunities to explore there. Uh, we've been out uh, to uh, Catawba County to look at uh, some of the incredible work happening in the high tech sector, at, uh, whether it's at Comscope or Google, at, at, at Facebook, and so on. We, we see a lot of neat opportunities to bring talent together. Uh, and that's something we would see happening locally, um, whether it's through service, again, or mentorship, as Chancellor Roberts mentioned. Will the existing Durham campus be referred to as NCSSM Durham moving forward? <laughs> uh, that hasn't been determined. It's come up in a lot of questions uh, about exactly what that would be. And, and the, the determination of calling NCSSM Morganton, as Kevin mentioned earlier, was for distinction between the two. We often refer to the, uh, the two campuses as NCSSM's uh, campus in Durham or NCSSM's campus in Morganton. Uh, so there's not a, a set, you know, what we're going to call the Durham campus. And in NCSSM Morganton, it may not be the final version of what this campus is called either. This is from Alan Nuttall. Any chance the robotics team can work something out to be able to either use the machining resources at WPCC or collaborate with students in the computer integrated machining program for fabricating parts? The, the very short answer to that is yes. Um, we, we are, as, as noted, we are um, incredibly interested in partnering. Um, and we have already begun to seed that. We had our academic programs division, our deans and directors and our vice chancellor come out to Morganton uh, this past June and visit sites um, from Conover uh, all the way out to uh, the Morganton area and on those stops the, the whole point of that was to really begin to understand all the different partnerships that we could explore that could support the curriculum to support our mentorship experiences and also that potentially could be begin to get some some student placements now to get to work with our Durham campus or our online camp uh, program to uh, to begin building relationships in the near term so so yes, we are working directly with Western Piedmont, with, with Burke County Public Schools, uh, but also with our partners across the Unifor region and Western North Carolina to understand where there's an interest, and then we want to tap into that uh, wherever we possibly can to promote those partnerships. Will there be competitive athletic programs for students on campus? There will be athletic programs. I hope we're competitive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say we, we, we get a lot of questions about which athletic programs. Uh, we have 21, I believe, athletic program uh, team sports in, in Durham. Uh, they're very competitive in, in a number of, of sports, and we intend to do that in Morganton. But when you only have 150 students in your first class, and it's broken down uh, nearly 50-50, male-female, uh, it, the students are going to drive that. They're going to tell us which sports they want to pursue uh, because we're not going to field 21 sports with 150 students. Uh, so as the campus grows over time and gets that second class and then potentially if we're to grow down the road, we would explore kind of catering to student interests where we could uh, field teams and where we would have opportunities to uh, compete in this general region. Uh, but there will be an athletics program. Uh, we just can't get into the weeds yet on specific sports. Uh, and won't be able to until we understand who our first class is going to be. What is one specific and significant difference you envision between Morganton and Durham? Can you, one specific? What is one specific or significant difference you envision between Morganton and Durham campuses? Well, the easy answer to that is that the campus design, uh, we've learned a lot from the Durham campus, and, and that's because of the student feedback, the faculty feedback, the staff feedback, the alumni feedback. They have all offered very um, open feedback around what works exceptionally well with the way that space has been designed, and what are some of the limitations or challenges that have been observed over the last 38 years. And so we are putting that information to work through Due to Pain's team to make sure that we try to offer some new strategies and pioneer some new space uh, approaches to space and to the campus uh, overall that could potentially, again, affect 
uh, Durham down the road as well if we learn some things on the Morganton campus that uh, could be made portable to affect Durham as well. This is from Tracy Salinas. How might NCSS and Morganton integrate the rich cultural heritage and cultural assets of Western North Carolina into its curriculum and other opportunities? There, there are countless ways. Uh, the, the, first of all, we have the opportunity at NCSSM to develop a, a very innovative, kind of evolving curriculum across all of our, our areas. So we're not um, teaching from one lesson plan for 10 years. Um, you know, at NCSSM, that's just not, not going to happen. And so when opportunities emerge for partnership, for um, for some, some new approaches, whether it's experiential learning opportunities or ways to affect the actual curriculum, we can explore those. Um, there are tremendous opportunities just in the Unifor region alone, but then when you go out um, closer to Buncombe County or um, down to Mecklenburg County, you see so much to explore partnerships around. And it all comes back to partnerships. Uh, where there is interest, we are going to be willing to sit down and talk through ways that our curriculum and our student experience can be affected in a positive way by building out those relationships. And so we're open to it. We don't have specific examples in mind because uh, we have not yet been able to tell folks what our actual program is going to look like. And so uh, as we get over the next year and a half, as we get more detail and continue these conversations, we'll more intentionally um, look at how we can affect the curriculum build out through those relationships and through some of the storytelling that can happen in Western North Carolina. Are you going to have a community garden and grow organic ingredients? After all, you're in the mountains and this is core to the culture. Community service can help with maintaining it and it could be a biology classroom outdoors. So uh, community gardens and uh, several other types of outdoor activities are gonna be planned um, both at the district level and on the campus level. I think you saw on some of the slides um, the partnerships with Western Piedmont, for instance, they've got a, a very a great sustainable agriculture program already in place. Um, but also we're looking at ways to incorporate green roofs into the architecture or to build in the courtyard spaces between our buildings um, stormwater treatment uh, gardens that can be a feature but also a learning opportunity. Um, maybe we will have vegetable gardens that are associated with the dining hall. Um, so there's lots of potential for really great ways to engage the outdoor environments in the educational process. Will you use local contractors, suppliers, and manufacturers for the build? For the construction? I assume so. Oh, yeah. That's all so, they said. So, uh, of course, um, the general contractor who is selected will have a lot to do with that, but obviously finding the resources in Western North Carolina is going to be critical in terms of meeting our schedule. Um, and so that will be an active part of the process, is seeking out local opportunities. Sophie, we have time for one more question. Okay, I'm And then just we're going to go the online list. and answer others um, in a public way online. Uh, we'll tell you more about that in a moment. Is there a plan to have the two campuses compete in academic competitions or collaborate? The answer might very well be both. Uh, there could be opportunities where teams will compete in academic competitions because there's uh, students that we, we have a science Olympiad team uh, here or they're competing in Siemens from both campuses. But there may so also be opportunities for students to collaborate across the campuses and uh, develop a team for an academic competition. They likely would compete because of the rules against each other in athletics. Um, but academic competitions, they certainly could collaborate together uh, and likely they'll be competing against each other as well. Okay, so thank you, Sophie, for stepping in. I think she did great. There, there are more questions than we have time to answer, but what we're going to do is, with all of those questions, including the ones we've already answered, uh, is write out a response to them and post it as a, uh, a PDF to our NCSSM Morganton webpage next week so that everyone who did take the time to ask a question will have that question answered. Um, I would also offer that this is an ongoing conversation. Uh, as you know, there are blueprints that have been developed by way of these sets of recommendations, but uh, they are not fixed. There's opportunities to respond to new and emerging areas where there's, there's interest or there's energy. Uh, and so please do not hesitate to reach out to us, either through me in Morganton or through the team in Durham, with any ideas that you have that are ripe for exploring for our online program, for our residential programs in either campus, or for the institution 
overall. This has been a tremendous opportunity for us to reestablish and reinvigorate relationships across the state in this institution. It's, it really is the state's high school. And what you have seen is from Cullowee to Wilmington, people have come out to learn more, not just about what's happening in Morganton, but what's already happening through incredibly successful programs in Durham and through our online uh, program. So uh, please do not be strangers. Please reach out to us with any ideas that you have. Please continue to be attentive to what's happening with this project as it moves forward. And if you're in a position where you think you might have something you can contribute, uh, we have a bucket we can pass out. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have a bucket. Uh, <laughs> rather, if you have some talent or expertise that you think you could bring to bear on this, this work, please make that known. Please reach out so that we can connect you with opportunities as we build out the next leg of our volunteer infrastructure as we figure out how to operationalize these incredible plans that have, uh, been there, that have come from so much work by our consultants and also by our core planning team and others. So with that, again, thank you all so very much for investing your time tonight to learn more about the campus. Please reach out to us and, and let us know how we can be helpful to your efforts to keep Western North Carolina moving. And again, stay tuned, there's more to come. Thanks very much.